Let's talk about the Apple Basket qualifiers first and foremost. Um, all the big teams, all the big nations are participating, which is a good thing. We don't particularly yeah. expect any surprises, do we? All the big guns should qualify for the Afro Basket. Um, well, we should expect some surprises. Uh, but first off, uh, COVID-19 had one casualty in um, Algeria. They pulled out um, of the qualifiers um, due to some scare both at home and, of course, traveling out and then financial issues as well uh, due to restrictions over there. So they pulled out of the qualifiers and South Sudan replaced them, who, by the way, we played yesterday. And it was quite interesting. So people like South Sudan can spring up surprises. That's why I said um, we shouldn't just go by the textbook. Mm. Um, I, I also think Kvet looks like one team that could also spring a surprise in, in the mix as well. So we have a pocket of teams, you know, who are looking to fight for a place at the 2021 um, Afro Basket in mm. Rwanda. Let, let, let's just look at some of the results, Femi. Nigeria defeated South Sudan, like you said, 76 to 56. Kenya, 66. Uh, they lost 83 66 to Angola. Senegal defeated Mozambique 60 to 53. And Mali are defeated uh, Rwanda 70 to 64. Um, Angola, Senegal, Nigeria, those Egypt, those are the countries we're looking to make a, a bit of a statement at these qualifiers, aren't we? Definitely. Um, add Tunisia to that list, and you'll be wrong. Um, looking at just how much pedigree they have on the continent. Uh, but let, let's not forget, um, I, like I mentioned COVID-19, I'll say it again. COVID-19 seems to be a leveler at this point because most teams haven't had much time to practice. They don't have their best players in the squad. Um, I was listening to the post-match interview yesterday by Coach Mike Brown, who, by the way, is, was took over his first game, had only two practices with the guys, and there was non-contact. Um, in, in that practice session going into the game against um, South Sudan. And if you watch that game very closely, you would see um, just how much of a scare it was in the third quarter, reducing a 16-point lead to about eight. And it was looking like um, South Sudan was going to give us a run for money, but we, we proved better in the, in the fourth quarter, 15-7, you know, we ended there, and we managed that 20-point um, victory. Um, the rest of the guys are taking care of business. There was a scare for Senegal as well against Mozambique. You mentioned that result. Um, I mean, they, they only managed to win that game by seven points. And I think it's just a reflection of how teams prepared going into this qualifying series. And uh, but, but you still expect them to grind, especially with the experience they are playing on the continent. Mm. Let, let me bring Namdi in. Mm. And um, the, the level of African basketball obviously has come into question over the years. Um, yeah. I think almost like football, the African countries are now almost having um, a bit of success in getting some African-born players who play abroad to come back and play for the national teams on the continent. So it's a big problem that the COVID-19 pandemic has hit. Yeah. But if not, we probably could have seen a star-studded um, tournament yeah. at least qualifiers. Yeah, well, I've seen a star-studded. I mean, we, we just saw the NBA draft and we saw um, the eight, eight Nigerians, at least. Uh, we know lots of Africans are out there playing in the NBA, which seems to be the most watched. I wouldn't say the best, mm -hmm. but the most watched uh, league, uh, basketball league in the world. Um, you know, and some Africans uh, who have played back in the day have found their way back to um, coaching. Lou Deng, we saw um, he is the coach of South Sudan. Um, it's, you know, th these things, uh, things are changing. There, there is now the high rise of African uh, basketballers in European soil, American soil, and wherever basketball is being played. So, um, you know, like Femi said, it, it's, it's, it's the level of COVID-19. Uh, this is not just uh, in one sport, it's everywhere. And uh, it's like everyone is playing with would have rather than who they would rather play with um, in terms of uh, the players for, for the country. So it's, it's really difficult at the moment. Femi, what's the attraction now? Uh, let's move away from uh, the Afro basket qualifiers. What's the attraction now for African-born players abroad who weren't particularly open to playing for the African teams, who all of a sudden there seems to be a rise in the amount of actual-born African players who want to return to play for national teams on the continent? I think it's just the rise in success of the African players. Obama Adebayo had a phenomenal season last year with the Miami Heat. Um, before injury struck, Victor Ladipo seems to be rising. You know, one um, couple of awards, most improved player, became an all-star, two-time all-star. Yanis Atetokounmpo, multiple MVP. So you could see there's a sudden rise of um, African um, players. Um, I'm using that word um, without any paritesis there. Um, regardless of where they represent. So there's a direct link to one and say, Africa has this um, gold mine of, of basketball talent. And if you look at it, even the NBA is directly even coming to Africa with the Basketball Africa League. You know, they, they, they 
they've established. Um, COVID-19 gain, and they didn't allow that lead to, to um, jump all in, in March. They tried to see if they could do it in December. Still not going to be possible. So we have to wait to 2021. But you can see that um, with the success of all these players, a few of them I mentioned, and you look at just how much um, Africa has to offer, um, there's, there's, there's a direct attention. And I think generally um, it's time for Africa. I mean, our music, our, our entertainment, movies, I also do it pretty well internationally. So I, I don't know. I, I think mm. the spotlight is just one this time around. And I just right. hope our, our administrators are, are not sleeping <laughs> and because it, it's time to begin to right and, and begin to put structures in place so that mm. um, we can make use of this season. Because it, it's summer now. Um, we don't want to get back to winter and find out that we didn't get any warm clothes in our process. <laughs> All right, let's look at the games today um, at the Afro Basket Qualifiers. And straight away, the game that jumps right at you, uh, Femi, is Senegal against Angola. It's just the qualifiers, but that's a huge game. Very huge. Um, it's going to mean a lot to both teams. Uh, but you look at Angola. Angola can't have their head coach, um, um, Coach Will Voigt, of COVID-19 again. So they got um, Neto to, to replace him temporarily for this um, qualifying series. Uh, but, but it's not too scary because three teams will qualify from each group. So we have two, two, two to have a full basket. So, um, but to just be pride, a little bit of pride at stake. Uh, you look at the margins at which they won their first games. Angola had it. I mean, you expect them to beat Kenya flawlessly, no question about it. Um, for Senegal, it was very, very close shave against Mozambique, who played very similar basketball to Angola. So that should give them an inkling as to, you know, the kind of opposition they will face from Angola today. So um, that game go down the wire. It's too difficult to call, you know, the honesty. Um, but, but if you ask me, I still think um, Senegal will have the edge um, in this one based on just how consistent they've been um, in terms of the players, the groupings, and of course having their coach um, in, in complement, full complement, unlike Angola, who have been in a rebuild in the last two, three years um, because all their stars are aging and they are bringing new blood. So they right. might have it a little bit tough with this Senegal. Okay, Femi, um, uh, let's move to the other big issue on the African continent this weekend, especially today. The CAF Champions League final has been postponed. It's been postponed. We didn't think we'd be watching the CAF Champions League final at this time, but uh, the CAF Champions League final is later tonight. It's Egyptian rivals Al Ali up against Zamalek of Egypt. And Amdi, these two teams, um, it's, it's safe to say that they don't see eye to eye. Even <laughs> in the, world, the, the Afghan qualifiers, yep. um, Zamalek and Ali players were told by their separate clubs yeah. not to get too familiar with each other because don't forget they're the enemy going into the CAF Champions League final. You know, it's, it's, it's really big. Uh, president of Ali, president of Zamalek, uh, players, uh, you know, this, this is a derby and a half. You want to watch it because of, um, I wouldn't say bad, bad blood is no good, but hey, uh, you want to see a true derby in the final and that's what it is. You know, um, getting both teams knocking off big teams from their North African rivals and uh, Morocco just to get to this final uh, in Raja Casablanca and without Casablanca uh, and, and to get to this final, I think it, it's a big one. But the good thing for Egypt as a country uh, is the fact that um, since 2013, this will be the first time since 2013 that an Egyptian coach... COVID-19 was almost an issue for this final, remember, Nabi? Yeah, almost. Uh, when, uh, you know, they had players uh, with... Um, from both sides. Yeah, from both sides with COVID-19 and the rest of it. See, it had to go now. The, the CAF Champions League ha finals had to go today because tomorrow we'll see other CAF Champions League matches uh, go down. So it, it just had to go down, <laughs> regardless of the problem. Um, big players, and you know, we're talking about players getting COVID-19. They're not little players, Tolu. They're mm. big players, players who will make or who should have made a difference uh, in the final, uh, but uh, they are not going to be available. But regardless, it's a CAF Champions League final. Let me let's quickly take your thoughts around that CAF Champions League final. Yeah, I, 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 I like the COVID-19 angle, and I like how, you know, it, it decided to pick three players on each side. So there's a balance. <laughs> the how much, um, they'll be missing on both ends. But, but it's great to see this. I heard it's the first time um, both teams will be meeting, you know, the CAF Champions League final. Uh, so it, it's going to look at, and you look at the fact that it's eight wins for Alali, five wins for Zamalek. So bragging rights would also be at stake. That reminds you of the Manchester United Liverpool Gist, we always hear about Europe and dominance and, you know, all, uh, sorry, I mean um, the Premier League, I mean to say, uh, in there. But, but it's good to see um, football in, in that side of the world. They, they really love football. I, I don't think, yes, we love football in Africa, but the way the North Africans take football, it's a totally different level. Mm. The passion, 
you know, and everything that goes into it. So I, I hope we really have very good finals for TV. I uh, know the crowds will be there. Mm. And I, any one of them can win it, really. It um, really doesn't matter at this point, but we just want to get this going and have COVID-19, you know, at the back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, so let's, let's call predictions then. Both ways, Nambi? Um, I'll, I'll be greedy because I, I, I love Alali. But they, they won the league um, as against Zamalek. But I think they, they will still win this one. They have an experienced coach in Pito Musimani. They have the players uh, to, to do this. It's going to be a slim victory, but Alali will take this one. Um, Femi? I think Alali too, because uh, they look like the hungrier side. Uh, they've been testing for this for a while. And the changes they've made um, the back room speaks mm. volumes of just how much they are intended to, to get the victory. Right. So I, I'll take what Alali to get this. All right, thank you very much, guys, for coming through on the show today. In the game here on New Central TV, don't forget, head to the website, newcentral.africa. Visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's at New Central TV. Don't forget, those Afro basket games are later tonight. The Senegal against Angola. That's the one to watch. And of course, there's Ali against Zamalek in the CAF Champions League final. My name is Tolu Shotari. It's been in the game here on New Central TV. And it's also wonderful. Man.